and the church said yeah. I welcome you to our Tuesday leaders development tonight and I pray that the Lord will make you forget yourself and lift up your heart your mind unto the Lord alone in Jesus name yeah. to really place the Lord and honestly praise the Lord you must forget about yourself, about your surrounding, about everything around you. And then your focus is only on the Lord. And then when your heart is like that, there's nothing between you and God. And there is no, nothing that you are thinking about. You want this, you want that. And your mind is totally set on God. That's when you can praise the Lord appropriately and acceptably. And the Lord accepts our praises tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we well, thank you for giving us understanding. Understanding of your word. Understanding of the gospel. Understanding of your desire. Understanding of the word of salvation. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us into the kingdom. Saved, converted, transformed. We praise you, accept our praises in Jesus' name. We thank you and praise your name and rejoice because our names are written in heaven. And Lord, we pray that this joy and praising your name because we have a name written in heaven that joy will never stop in jesus name thank you for revealing to us your watch on holiness that without holiness no man shall see the lord many people worship many people read the bible they don't understand the central essence importance of holiness but lord you have opened our eyes to see and you are reaching the word on the tables of our hearts that we follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man will see the lord for the revelation you have given us for understanding for the conviction and for the experience of sanctification we praise you in jesus name and for granting us the same power you granted the apostles of old the believers of old that as we wait upon you that you anoint us you empower us you baptize us in the holy ghost thank you lord for the experience and thank you for the power we pray that our hearts will always rest on what you have given what you have done for us in jesus name for healing for deliverance for victory for possibilities for answers to prayer lord we raise our hearts our voice unto you accept our praises in jesus name for choosing us to become not only members of the family of god but leaders workers and servants of god to declare your word unto the perishing world lord we're not taking your call your service for granted we praise you accept our praises in jesus name and for keeping us alive today alive to see the day alive to read your word alive to understand the revelation you are giving us every time oh lord we pray our hearts our life our character behavior everything will always offer praises unto you in jesus name lord lead us to your word tonight and let your word wake us up that we realize how to praise you when to praise you where to praise you and the result of praising you in our lives in jesus name we well, thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray and the people of god said amen God bless you. You can see that we're coming to the Psalms. Today we're looking at the last six Psalms in the book of Psalms 145, 
146, 147, 148, 149, and the last 150. We're going to read now the first two verses in each of those Psalms, and you'll see the concentration on praising the Lord. Psalm 145, verse 1 I will extol thee, my God. O King, I will bless thy name forever and ever. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, every day I will bless thee. I will praise thy name forever and ever. Psalm 146, verses 1 and 2. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. And then in verse 2, it tells us, While I live, will I praise the Lord? I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. 147, reading from verse 1, Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praise unto our God, for it is pleasant. And praise is comely. Verse 2 tells us, The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. Psalm 148, reading from verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the highs. Look at verse 2 there. Praise ye him. All his angels, praise ye him, all his hosts. 149 verse 1, praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song. And his praise in the congregation of saints. Verse 2 there tells us, let Israel rejoice in him that made him, let the children of Zion be joyful in their kings. And 150 now, verse 1, praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. And then in verse 2, it tells us, Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. So you see, those uh, six Psalms ending the book of the Psalms, they begin with praise. Praise him. Praise the Lord. Praise our God. Praise our King. Praise our Creator. Because he had the power to create and he did praise him because of redemption, praise him, and because of answers to prayer, praise him. Because when you cried, he answered your prayer, praise him, because he's preparing a kingdom and he has a place for you in that kingdom, praise him in the day, in the morning, afternoon, and evening, praise him in the time of your difficulty, in the time of persecution, like Paul and Simon. Silas, praise him in the time when you are joyful and the spirits have obeyed your word because of the name of Christ. It says, praise him. It says, in every circumstance, in every situation, anything, anywhere, everywhere, praise the Lord. And I pray the Lord will always remind us, praising the Lord every time. At every opportunity, whatever is happening, and the praises of God from your heart in your mouth, rising up to Him like the like the incense out of the sanctuary of the people of God will catch His attention, and all your problems are solved in Jesus' name. God bless you for that. Amen. That's good. Another good. Amen. Three things we're looking at today as we talk about uh, the acceptable praise of faithful saints and servants. Three things. Number one, the provision and promise for his people. The provision, the provision he has made for us and the promise he has given unto us and to his people. It says because of that, we praise him. Number two now is the power and perception of the only potentate. The Bible, the New Testament refers to God as the only potentate. The one that is high, high 
high, no one higher than himself, the one that is powerful, no one more powerful than him, and the one that exists forever, from everlasting to everlasting, is the potentage, the power, and perception of the only potentate. Number three, the pain of perverting his praise. Would you know there are people because of their unsanctified heart, unconverted heart, uncommitted heart, unconsecrated heart unto the Lord, they think they are praising, but actually they are praising themselves. They're showing the flesh and they're throwing the buttocks and the body and they're throwing that all around. And actually, they want you to see how maybe handsome or beautiful or big or whatever and how they can maneuver their bodies when they say they are dancing unto the Lord. They're doing that unto themselves. That the people that have perversion, the praise of God that is perfect, the praise of God that is acceptable, the praise of God that is commanded, they pervert that and they suffer for that, the pain of perverting his praise. Let's come to number one. Number one, the provision and promise for his people. We're coming to Psalm 145, look at verse 3. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Look at verse 9 there. In verse 9, it's telling us about the goodness of God. God, and he says the Lord is good to all To the sinners he wants to save all To the saved he wants to sanctify all And for those who are sanctified He wants to fill everyone with the Holy Ghost But to everyone that is sick He wants to heal them Everyone that is oppressed He wants to deliver them The Lord is good to all And his tender mercies are over all his works Look at verse 8 18 there in verse 18 the Lord is, is nigh unto all them other than the world all is near to all them that call upon him look at the word all again to all that call upon him in truth and then in verse 19 he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him he also will hear their cry and will save them Psalm 146 I'm reading from verse 5 there it says happy 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 excited and blessed and joyful happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help whose hope is in the Lord is God. In verse 6 it tells us, it says which made heaven, that is the God we're talking about is a creator, is the creator of the heavens and the earth, which made heaven and earth the sea and all that therein is, which keep it truth forever. Then in verse 7 it says which executed judgment for the oppressed which giveth food to the hungry, the Lord looses the prisoners. Verse 8 tells us the Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. He did it in the past, he's doing it today, will forever do it. Anywhere there's a blind person, anywhere we manifest faith as we pray, he openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous, the provision and the promise for his people. Three things we're looking at. Number one, our praise of the glorious unsearchable God. Number two, our provision from the great unlimited God. Number three, the power of the gracious unchangeable God. Look at number one. Number one is our praise of the glorious unsearchable God. It tells us in Psalm 145 verse 3 how unsearchable our God is. It says great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. His greatness is unsearchable. His great with every description. 
is great without any limitation is great in every part of the world is great for every one of his creatures that will recognize him and call upon him his greatness is unsearchable is so deep you cannot go to the bottom and it's so wide you cannot circle it is so high you do not know the height the greatness of the lord is gloriously unsearchable it tells us in verse 4 it says in verse 4 one generation shall praise thy words to another and shall declare his mighty works there is no generation that will miss the greatness of the lord and the unsearchable wonders of the almighty God, our generation, past generation, the coming generation, until the end of her dispensation, the greatness of the Lord will appear to everyone, unsearchable. And it says in verse 5, it says, I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty and of thy wondrous works, Unsearchable wonders, unsearchable works, unsearchable uh, thing that he does even today in Job chapter 5, verse 8. It says, I would seek unto God, and unto God would I commit my cause. Whatever you are going through, whatever the challenge, whatever the uphill task, you commit everything unto Him. Why? Look at verse 9, which doeth great things and unsearchable he doeth great things on unsearchable if he's doing it for everybody why not for me why not for you and if his words are unsearchable why would i get to the end of my trial and the end of my difficulty and the end of my challenges since the the will of god the glory of god the power of god is so great is so big is so high is so deep it's unsearchable the wonders of god and they go everywhere and they touch everyone why would i then not believe god for the greatest miracle that i'm looking for as you believe God today, that work, that power, that provision will be unsearchable in your life in Jesus' name. He doeth great wonders and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. Marvelous things without number. Your name is there, your portion is there. And all those wonderful things it does without number, you will get your own in Jesus' name. And look at Romans chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 29. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. He doesn't, you know, change his mind. He has called you to salvation. He doesn't say, what did I say to him? He called you to holiness and sanctification. What did I sanctify her? He calls you to power. Why did I give him power? The gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. Look at verse 33. It says, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out and then in verse 36 it tells us it says for of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever amen in ephesians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 8 ephesians chapter 3 we're looking at verse 8 unto me who am less than the least of all sins is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ that I, Paul, that I, Timothy, that I, all the others that will follow Paul as he's following Christ, that you and I will preach unto the Gentiles, unto the heathen, unto the nations, unto everybody, preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. There are people who only preach salvation, 
salvation, salvation. If you keep to that alone, you are not preaching the unsearchable riches of Christ. Other people preach only salvation and sanctification. And they say, thus far, no more. That's limited. You are not preaching to the Gentiles or the people the unsearchable riches of Christ. Other people preach um, salvation. They don't preach sanctification in the middle. They preach Holy Ghost baptism, speaking in tongues. That's not all. You are not preaching the unsearchable riches of Christ. Other people only preach salvation and healing. You are not preaching the unsearchable riches of Christ. Other people, it is a deliverance, deliverance, deliverance. And they see demons, they see Satan everywhere. And anywhere you turn, only deliverance. They are not preaching the unsearchable riches of, of Christ. Other people preach the first coming of Christ, they don't preach the second coming of Christ, they're not preaching the unsearchable riches of Christ. But when you take everything the Lord has provided on the cross of Calvary, and then you delve into it, and you plunge into it, and you dive into it, and everything that Christ did on the cross of Calvary becomes a benefit for you and you are a beneficiary then like Paul, like Timothy, like Silas, like Titus, like all those other people of the first generation, you are preaching among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Uh, let's go to number two now. In number two, it tells us about our provision from the great unlimited God. Our God is unlimited. And there are people that do not understand that God is unlimited. It's as high as heaven. And all it does is as deep as the deepest ocean. They are limited in their understanding as to what God can do now. When they read in the New Testament, God has done this. Oh, they say that was the time of Christ. That was the time of the apostles. That was the time of those good old days. But you know, God said, I am God and ch I change not. And then Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. Anything he did at that time he has provided everything and he's the great God is the unlimited God I want to assure you tonight every need of your life it will meet in Jesus name it will it will raise you up it will lift you up you'll be higher than you ever thought you will go in your life in Jesus name Anything of this uh, that is limiting you, if you're serving the unlimited God, if you're serving a God that cannot be limited, and you are the child of the unlimited King, your life will be unlimited. As you walk, your strength will be unlimited. As you have, you need provision, provision will be unlimited in your life in Jesus' name. Don't look back look forward don't look down look up and don't think of what you have now think of what you are going to have because our provision is from the great unlimited god look at this psalm 145 i'm reading from verse 8 it says the lord is gracious and full of compassion and slow to anger and of great mercy how great is the mercy of god greater than anybody can ever think of greater than anybody can say can tell greater than anybody can write if all the waters in the ocean of the world all the seas of the world if they were ink if all the trees of the world if we covered pens out of them and then you have all the trees of the world as pens all the oceans of the world as ink, they cannot write together fully all the compassion and the mercy and the greatness of his love for you. Great. Somebody shout great. 
is of great mercy whatever sins anyone has committed the grace of god is greater the love of god is greater the mercy of god is greater whatever sickness of whatever description anybody has even if as the brink of death the power of god is greater if he still has something for you to do you'll come out of that edge of the grave you'll come alive and then he will so lift you up you'll be higher than ever you were before that sickness came upon you in jesus name look at verse 9 in verse 9 the lord is good to all i thank god the lord is good to me it will answer my prayer whatever i did wrong in the past talk now he is not bearing grudge against me and then when i was hiding myself talk 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 when i was hiding myself his love was looking for me the love of god is looking for you Wherever you have gone, whatever you have done, in whatever way you have brought shame to yourself, the Lord is good to all. And His tender mercies are over all His works. He'll never be harsh to you. He'll never say, but look at what you have done. He'll be tender towards you. And even when all the people of the world are angry against you, he'll say, don't mind all of them, I love you still. And the love of God will never stop in your life in Jesus' name. He's a provider. He's my provider. Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22, we're reading from verse 8. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a bunch offering. And so they went both of them together. Before you were born, God was thinking of you. Before you sinned, God knew you were sin. And he was saying, I'll prepare salvation for him. I'll prepare salvation for her. And then he provided our substitute. He provided our salvation. He gave his only begotten son to be your savior. And then by the time you got there, you know, Isaac was asking Abraham. And Isaac said, Father, where is the lamb for the sacrifice? And by faith, Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamp for the burnt offering. Before I seek new, the substitute was already provided. Before you knew about salvation, your substitute was already provided. And the moment you came and then you said, I repent, Lord forgive me, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, it is not because he is god our provider look at verse 14 in verse 14 abram called the name of that place tell me jehovah jireh jehovah jireh that is the lord god our provider as it is to this day in the mouth of the lord it shall be seen a provider a provider all things are provided for you in jesus name in second peter chapter one second peter chapter one i'm reading from verse three according as his divine power he has given unto us tell me how many things all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue he has not called you to shame. Shame is cancelled in your life. He has not called you to weakness. Weakness is cancelled in your life. He has called you to glory. And he has called you to virtue. You have them in Jesus name. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says. Whereby a giving unto us. Say he has given unto me. Whereby he has given unto you. Exceeding great. 
and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. I have escaped. The corruption in the office, you have escaped. The corruption in the country, you have escaped. You stand and you represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords And he has given you the power, the courage and the strength To go against every form of corruption And to stand clean and clear and pure And by the grace of, of God you will in Jesus name Look at number three here Number three is the power of the gracious unchangeable God The power of the gracious, unchangeable God. In Psalm 146, I'm reading here from verse 3. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no hell. Look at verse 4. It says, His breath goeth out, is limited. His life on earth is limited. His ability is limited. And even those promises he makes, they're limited. And it says, His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth. In that very day, his thoughts perish. Look at verse 5 now. Happy is he. Are you happy? Why are you happy? Because you belong to the Lord. And because every need of your life is going to supply in Jesus' name. Happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help. He is your helper. Whose hope is your hope. Whose hope is in the Lord is God. Look at verse 6 there. Which made heaven and earth. The sea and all them therein that therein is which keepeth truth forever. And then in verse 7, which executed judgment for the oppressed, which uh, giveth food to the hungry, which the Lord looseth the prisoners. If you are incarcerated, you are confined, you are imprisoned. Uh, those doors of the prison and the windows and the very foundation of your prison they are shaking and they are loose and they are open in Jesus name Amen. then in verse 8 it tells us the Lord openeth the eyes of the blind the Lord openeth the eyes of the blind it will open my eyes I said it will open my eyes and you know, sometimes, sometimes you see, but you don't perceive. Here was Hagar, and Hagar had her child Ishmael, and Abraham had given a bottle of water, and had sent her away, don't ever come back. And then Hagar took the child and was going, it was a wilderness, where are they going to live, which house are they, are they going to dwell in, and the water in the bottle finished, and then Hagar stayed there and cried, and then turned away, I don't want to see the death of the child, this child is going to die of thirst, she had physical eyes, that she could see everything but she didn't see the well of water nearby and the bible says and the lord opened her eyes and she saw the well of water that had been there all the time but she did not see and then she went there she got the water and that child came alive your family will come alive the provision you are looking for, you didn't know it was there. And all the promises of God, you didn't know this. Uh, the day that the Lord has made is going to satisfy every need of your life in Jesus' name. The Lord is still doing that today. He's still opening the eyes of the blind. The Lord resets them that are bowed down. Heartache. Heart attack and sorrow and suffering You are humiliated You are down like this The Lord is going to lift you up 
that sorrow and that burden upon in your heart that is meant to be like that and you think life has finished no life has not finished you come up again in jesus name in the natural what goes up will talk will come down in the spiritual what goes down will come up and in your life everything that has come down and then you are sorrowful how about this how about the chair of my brother what has come down will come up in jesus name the Lord loveth the righteous. You are saved. You are his child. The Lord loveth the righteous. We're looking at Matthew chapter 19. And I'm reading from verse 26. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible what is impossible for men scientific men medical men engineering men political men rich men financing men what's impossible with men philosophical men what's impossible for men all around you come to god tonight is possible with god with men this is impossible but with god tell me all things were in my life I said in my family I said on my children I said on my loved ones things are turning around in your life all things are possible in Jesus name let's come to number two now point number two is the power and the perception of the only potentate we're coming to psalm 147 in psalm 147 we're looking at verse 5 it says great is our lord and of great power and his understanding is infinite underline that in your bible great is our lord and great of great power is he is understanding you know sometimes you uh, you have a, a problem a challenge and then you find out somebody is going to help you you explain and explain and explain you can read on his face he doesn't understand and he cannot understand then you go to another person to another person and they cannot understand sometimes there is sickness and uh, you go to people who are supposed to know and you explain and explain and then they pass you through all whatever procedure they cannot understand when you come to god even before you come you already understands he understands where you ache. He understands where you have the problem. He understands you are trying to be your best and do your best. And yet, what is coming out is not your best. It's going to change today. Because his understanding is infinite you cannot get to the end of it there is no problem there's no difficulty there's no challenge you have you take to god and god says this one is beyond me how did you get this problem this one is beyond my promise it's beyond my power is understanding is everybody tell me infinite then look at psalm 148 i'm reading from verse 5 let them praise the name of the lord for he commanded and they were created that's all he needs to do all he needs to do is to command is to declare and it is done in my life in your life in your family in your christian life in the great assignment he has given unto you tell him wants to tell him the result is clear he's going to do a new creation in your life in jesus name look at verse 6 in verse 6 it says he has also established them forever and ever he has made a decree which shall not pass and then in verse 7 it says praise the lord 
from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps. In verse 8, it tells us fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. Wind or storm, waves or difficulty, challenges, that thing that is rising up. I can't understand this. Don't worry. God understands. Everything will fulfill the perfect will of God in your life. In Jesus' name. Joseph, do you understand all the dreams you had? And now you're in Potiphar's house. And look at the big lie against your life. And look at yourself in the prison. And look at you now. You're grinding something here. And it chain your feet. Do you understand? No, I don't understand, but God understands. And the word of God will still be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the power of our most high God. Nobody has I as God. The power of our most high God. Number two, the pleasure of our most holy God. Number three, the praise of our most hallowed God. Let's look at number one there. Number one there is the power of our most high God. It's the most high. Look at Psalm 147, reading from verse two, the Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathered together the outcasts of Israel. And then in verse 3, it tells us, He healeth the broken in heart. Tonight, I said today, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds, internal wounds, psychological wounds, emotional wounds, physical wounds. It'll bind up the wounds of your life today in Jesus' name. Look at verse 4 there. It says, He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by names. Now they tell us the stars in the galaxies of heaven, they are uncountable. But God counts them. And it says, the heirs of your head, which no barber has ever tried to count, God counts all of them. And then he knows your name, he knows your need, he knows where you are, and he's going to supply that need in Jesus' name. He calleth them all by their names in verse 5. Great is our Lord, and of great power is understanding is infinite. We're coming to Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah 32 verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power that's the power of the almighty god that power is the power of the most high god and stretch out arm and there is nothing too hard for thee i want you to think about the prayer request you are going to present to the lord tonight I want you to think about the prayer request that other people have sent to you. Um, brother, pray for us. Sister, pray for us. Daddy, pray for us. Mommy, pray for us. I want you to think about what you are going to tell the Lord about them. There is nothing too hard for our God. He will do it. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, is great in counsel and mighty in work. For thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men to give everyone, to give everyone, to give everyone. God is uh, waiting for me tonight to give me something. I say God is waiting for me tonight to give me something. Everyone, 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 you will catch, you'll get your own in Jesus' name to give everyone according to the fruit of their doing. You will not miss your own. First Peter chapter 1, we're reading from verse 5. First Peter chapter 1, verse 5, who are kept 
by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time who are kept by the power of God you know sometimes when somebody gets saved a new convert the friends will tell him all right we we'll give you two weeks, everything will fizzle out. We we'll give you one month, and all that excitement, all that joy of salvation, I am born again, I'm born again. They say everything will finish within one month. Maybe they told you before like that, and 10 years have passed, you're still alive. Alive in Christ. Alive spiritually And 20 years may pass 30 years may pass You'll be getting stronger and stronger And stronger in Jesus name We are kept by the power of God Through faith unto the final salvation Ready to be revealed at the last time We we'll come to number two here Number two here is the pleasure of a most holy God the most holy God As a holy God He has pleasure He has desires He has the things that please him Let's look at Psalm 147 Reading from verse 10 He delighted not In the strength of the horse He taketh not pleasure In the legs of a man You know there are people They rejoice because of their legs Maybe they are athletes and all they think about is their leg. And it says, the Lord taketh no pleasure in the legs of a man. Maybe they are dancers. And because of the way they are able to maneuver and move their legs, they take so much pleasure in their movement. And the Lord taketh no pleasure in the legs of a man. What does he take pleasure in? Look at verse 11. In verse 11, the Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him you fear the lord you love the lord you desire the lord you are walking with the lord the lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him in those that hope in his mercy he taketh pleasure in the people that never give up the days are dark and dreary but i'll be god in heaven the sickness is biting and destroying the body I'll be God in heaven I'm at a crossroad I don't know where I will go But I'm trusting in God The challenges are rising and rising No problem I'll be God in heaven He taketh pleasure in those that hope in his mercy Your hope will never die off in Jesus name and then uh, let's look at Hebrews chapter 12, uh, reading from verse 10. Hebrews chapter 12, uh, reading from verse 10. For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. That's talking of our earthly parents. They corrected us, they chastened us, they trained us after their pleasure. But he, for our profit... He, for, for the, he taketh pleasure in what is profitable for us That we might be partakers of his holiness That's what he takes pleasure in In verse 14 it says follow peace with all men Why? That's what God takes pleasure in And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord Why? Because that is what God takes pleasure in And then in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 We're told it says the Lord is not slack Concerning his promise As some men count slackness but is long is a long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish. Why? Because it takes pleasure in the fact that he wants all to come to repentance. When a sinner comes to repentance, when a backslider comes to restoration, when a backslider prodigal, some prodigal daughter said, I will go back home to my father, my heavenly father. I would say, I've sinned before you and before heaven. I'm not worthy to be called your son, but make me one of the hired servants. I will not go back again I will serve you I will remain and abide with you Forever and ever God 
takes pleasure in that when somebody who has been lukewarm and who has been satisfied with material blessing when he comes to God and he says oh Lord I come to you I've been coach I want to be hot I've been lukewarm I want to be fervent I've been prayerless I want to be prayerful God takes pleasure in everyone that comes to repentance to restoration and to renewal and to regeneration new life coming upon our lives the Lord takes pleasure in that I pray the Lord will take pleasure in you I said the Lord will take pleasure in you when you come back home fully with all your heart all your soul all your mind and you love him without a rival the Lord will take pleasure in you and when he takes pleasure in you everything you want him to do in your life in your family in your profession in your ministry everything you ask him the Lord will answer your prayer He'll put that joy and that happiness, he'll put that in your life and nothing will take away your joy in Jesus' name. We're coming to number three here. Number three is the praise of our most hallowed God. Hallowed God. We hallow him. We honor him. We exalt him. And we praise him all the time. Look at Psalm 148 from verse 1. Praise the Lord and praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the highs. Then he tells us in verse 2, he's still talking about praise. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his souls. Look at verse 3. He's saying, Praise ye him. Verse 1, praise him. Verse 2, praise him. Verse 3, praise him. Son and moon, praise him. All ye stars of light. Verse 4, in verse 4, praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, let them praise the name of the Lord. Lord, verse 1, keep on praising. Verse 2, keep on lifting him up, praising him. In verse 3, in verse 4, in verse 5, let them praise the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created. And then in verse 6 now, it says, he has established them forever and ever. He has made a decree which shall not pass. He has made a decree which shall not pass. Look up here. You see those mighty oceans? They have the shore. And then God makes a decree. He says, those running waters, those stormy waters, and those water uh, waters in the ocean, they'll never pass this shoreline. There are behemoths there, there are crocodiles there, there are whales there, and they swim here and there. But that water of the ocean shall not pass that level. You know, in your life, Whatever storm the Lord gives a command, it will not pass that line. Whatever challenge and whatever stormy wind, it will not pass that place. And you shall be thanking God. Other people have challenges, they have problems, and their problems escalate and escalate and escalate. But your own will never pass that limit whatever will destroy you will not come beyond this limit whatever will jolt your life and make you not to fulfill the will of God in your life again relax it will not pass this line and then even after it has reached that line and you stay there having the knowledge that your heavenly father has commanded it will not pass that line don't run away stand there I say stand there and that thing you will see it will not pass that line and then after it gets to that line now you link up with the almighty and you make a decree I make a decree and the decree coming out of your mouth it will be done from heaven in Jesus name he has made a decree which shall not pass it shall not pass beyond that line 
Somebody give a good amen. amen. Philippians, Philippians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 10. That she may approve things that are excellent. Things that are excellent. That she may be sincere without offense till the day of Christ. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, being filled with the fruit of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and the praise of God. Your family will be to the praise of God. Your ministry will be to the praise of God. Everything you are thinking about, everything will end well. I said everything in your life will end well. And everything will come eventually to the glory of God in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, the pain of perverting his praise. You know, already we've been talking about praise, the praise of God, learning about the praise of God. Look at Psalm 149, verses 3 and 4. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with timbrel and harp. And then in verse 4, it tells us in verse 4, the, For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Psalm 150, we're reading from verse 2. It says, Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. And then in verse 3, it says, Praise him for the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sceptre and harp. Now in verse 4, praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Now you'll find the word there dance dance or dancing now as you look at that word and you go to the bible you check up you find that word dancing in exodus and then you don't find in leviticus and and deuteronomy and numbers but you'll find it again in judges dancing and then you come to the Psalms dancing. You go to Second Samuel, and when David danced before the Lord, you find dancing. And then you go on now to the New Testament. As you come to the New Testament, you find the word dance in the parable of Christ. If the children sin, we have heart unto you, we have piped unto you, but you have not danced. Those are children, and they are not worshiping. They are not doing merriment. They are just, you know, doing a little children's play. And then you find in Mark, you find the dancing of the daughter of Herod. How she danced as you come to the Acts, all to the end of the Bible, in the epistles, no dance. Well, when you study the Bible as leaders, you need to understand why is this here and why is this not here? And so as you check up, you're not just saying, I read in Psalm 149, I read in Psalm 150 about dance. What kind of dance? And then why is it you don't find it in First Corinthians where the worship of God is explained very well? It's not in Ephesians where you have how to rejoice in Philippians 2, how to rejoice and dance all through to the book of Revelation why is it not there that's why we're looking at the three things here that we'll talk about the pain of perverting his praise number one the perfect pattern of dancing without lust number two the present perversion of dancing with lustfulness. Number three, the perpetual punishment of the damned at last. Let's come to number one now. Number one, the perfect pattern of dancing without loss. We're coming to Exodus chapter 15. 
Our reading from verse 2. The children of Israel have been delivered out of the Red Sea from the hand of the Egyptian oppressors who ran after them, wanting to capture them, take them back to Egypt and take them back to slavery. They cried unto the Lord and Moses cried unto the Lord. And God said, Why well, you crying unto me? Stretch out the rod. And then he stretched out the rod and the sea parted for them and they went over millions of them about three million they passed over the on dry ground and then the egyptians ran after them and they all perished in the red sea and about 200 uh, years of uh, captivity and slavery everything uh, died down there that's why now as we read in exodus chapter 15 uh, reading from verse 1 you will see what has happened unto them uh, then sang moses and the children of israel they sung unto the lord and spake saying i will sing uh, unto the lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horse and his rider as he thrown into the sea and then in verse 2 were told and the, they said the Lord is my strength and my song and he is become my salvation he is my God I will prepare him an habitation my father's God and I will exalt him then we read in verse 13 it says thou in thy mercy has led forth the people which thou hast redeemed thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation here is verse 20 now in verse 20 and Miriam the prophetess the sister of Aaron took a timbrel in her hand and all the women notice that Miriam a woman and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances women alone by themselves not man and woman dancing together they were rejoicing because of what the lord had done and it was not nightclub it was not a, a weekly activity it was once in their lifetime all those 40 years because of what the lord had done and were told the uh, miriam and the women they danced unto the lord what makes the dancing of the world right now in the nightclub, what makes it interesting to them? One, because of bodily contact between men and women. If you take the bodily contact away and the women were to dance in isolation by themselves, not having any bodily contact with the men, they lose interest. They will not stay there for hours just dancing alone without the bodily contact. That's the perversion. And then if the men were to go there to the dancing and they didn't see colorful dressing and the dressing that shows the contour, the anatomy of the body, it will not be interesting to them. You see these women with Miriam, they didn't dress in a special way for the dance. It was the regular dressing that they had and it wasn't uh, it wasn't seductive it was not attracting anybody to any moral thing all alone by themselves in the regular normal dressing it was not in the night when the lights were dim it was in broad daylight and it wasn't a special hall in a very special place it was just the ordinary thing uh, as uh, you know we're rejoicing this has happened and then we're rejoicing Rejoicing. That's why before the Lord that was not condemned. And that 
that is why the dancing of today which is very different even in churches uh, you know as the people are throwing the different parts of their body all around and their you know flesh uh, contacting flesh and then feeling all the lost in their body that's why that one is condemned but this one Miriam and the women they went out after her with timbrel and with dances and then in verse 21 it says a Miriam answered them sing ye to the Lord they were not singing to the praise of a politician they were not singing to the praise of somebody having birthday they were not singing to the praise of anyone that has bought this and bought this and they were not psychophants that were singing for the praise of Moses or Aaron or any of the people it is sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously it's not the rod of Moses it is he who has triumphed gloriously and it is not um, you know all the other people in the land he the God of heaven he has triumphed over the horse and the rider he, he has thrown them into the sea uh, that's uh, why when we read this we understand and we say there's no lust in this there's no pride in this there's no exposure to immorality in this in first john chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 15 first john chapter 2 verse 15 it says love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man if any woman love the world if you love the dances of the world because of the body contact and because of the laws and because of the exposure of the different parts of the bodies of the men and the women it says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him it says in verse 16 for all that is in the world the lost of the flesh that you find in a dancing horse and the lost of the eyes that you find their eyes roaming about and uh, you know coming and uh, skimming and looking at all those uh, women and all the men cheer and the pride of life the pride of their costume the pride of their new appearance and the pride of their worldly uh, worldly celebration is not of the father but is of the world and then in verse 17 and the world passeth away and the laws thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever I pray you'll abide forever number two here number two is the present perversion of dancing with lustfulness the present perversion of dancing with lustfulness and we're looking at uh, judges chapter 21 and we're reading from verse 21 judges chapter 21 verse 21 and see and behold the daughters of shiloh come out to dance in the dances shiloh why was Shiloh eventually forgotten and brushed aside and thrown away by the Lord? The world came in. The practices of the Gentiles came in. That is why, although Shiloh was a place of worship and a place of great celebration before, eventually God said, why Peter? Because all this is came in, then come ye out of the vineyard and catch you every man his wife you're looking for somebody to marry just going to the dancing hall and then you'll see them as they shake themselves and then as you like what you see pick whoever you want of the daughters of shiloh and go to the land of benjamin and then he tells us in verse 23 he says and the children of benjamin did so and he took them wives according to the number of them that danced a parental consent uh -uh, that's not that's not there when you just see them in the dance i love you i appreciate you are you married are you available in fact i feel you should go home now why not and then from the dancing hall they wait and the real process of marriage they won't achieve anymore it happens in those uh, churches where they have all these uh, young people and it is by the look looking at 
at their body and looking at how they shake themselves and then they hug themselves they kiss themselves and uh, with that feeling the young man while they're dancing there saying uh, can we continue together can this happen and the lady too of course and the do a little bit of drinking and they have a little bit of drugs they have a little bit of everything their senses are not accurate anymore or perfect anymore to think about the future it's only the merriment and the fleshly enjoyment of the hour they are thinking about and so they took them of the number that danced and it says whom they called and they went and returned to their inheritance and repaired the cities and dwelt in them look at verse 25 Five, it tells us the conclusion of how and why they did what they did in those days there was no king in Israel there's no teacher in Israel there was no prophet in Israel there's no uh, coach in Israel there was no trainer in Israel to tell the people this is the way to go that's not the way to go in those days there was no king in Israel every man did that which was right in his own eyes have you seen that today uh, this one just comes up I have a calling there is up a ministry there is up a church there is up an assembly they don't have any overseer they don't have anybody they are going to report to they don't have anybody that will look at the doctrines they are preaching they don't have anybody that will check them and say that's not right that's not New Testament that's not a doctrine that will edify the life of believers they are all isolated that church there all by itself that church there all by itself that church there all by itself and whatever they can pick that is what they just pick and they go on and they think that dancing drumming will attract people yes it will attract people of the flesh it will not attract them to salvation in those days there was no king in Israel every man did that which was right in his own eyes let's come now to uh, number three Number three here is the perpetual punishment of the damned at last. We're looking at Mark chapter 6, reading from verse 20. Mark chapter 6, verse 20. For Herod feared John, and knowing that he was a just man and an holy man, observed him. And when he heard him, when Herod heard John the Baptist, he did many things and he heard him gladly. Now, things changed. Why? Look at verse 21. In verse 21, and when a convenient day was come, that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his laws, high to his uh, high captains and chief estate of Galilee in verse 22 and when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced came in and danced she pleased Herod and pleased them that such was him she didn't talk she only danced what oh, please them, the movement of the body and the pushing of this outside part around the chest and the protrusion of the lower part, the buttocks, and the way she moved and did everything. Now, she was not a daughter to Herod. Herodias was coming into the life of this Herod with this daughter. And so you understand the attraction. Please, Herod, and them that sat with him. And the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me that kind of dancing 
will make people lose their brain, lose their mind, lose their thinking. They cannot think ahead. They, they, they had not planned this before. Just impromptu promise that was making to the girl and says, Whatsoever thou wilt ask me, and I will give it thee. Verse 23. In verse 23, and he swear unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee unto the half of my kingdom. How people throw away their savings and they throw away all their lives and is just because they saw somebody dancing, they go to that, that dance, dancing hall, whatever it will take for me to have that girl, that lady, that woman, I'll pay whatever price and then they'll approach right there on ground while, while, while they're dancing. Now tell me what's your price? What's your price? Name it and I will pay it. That's what happened to Herod. And you know, when people are like that, although they go to the house of worship, all they are looking for, if the dancing is not there, the worship is not interesting. And after they have sung and danced and drummed and everything, then they say they are listening to the word of God. If the preacher goes beyond 15, 20 minutes, that's too long. That's too long. But if the preacher then uh, breaks uh, what he's saying and he's saying we're going to worship again, the people will rejoice because that's what they went for. That's why if we're really going to get people out of sin, out of loss, out of immorality, out of fornication, out of adultery, out of breaking homes of other people, but these uh, young dancers, if we're going to stem the situation and we're going to bring sanity into the churches, all those things ought to stop so that you know people don't lose their mind, they don't lose their head while they should give all their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then in verse 24, in verse 24 it says, And she went forth, and she said unto her mother, What shall I ask? A lady that did not have a mind of her own, did not have a decision of her own, and did not have any conviction to, to know whether this is right or wrong, whether my young life uh, should get involved with the hatred between her mother and John the Baptist. She didn't have a mind of her own, so she said, what shall I ask? And she said, the head of John the Baptist. And she didn't ask any question. No question. What do I need in my life? If I have the head of John the Baptist, how does that affect my future? I, not money, and not education, and not a good work, and not a future, not a good husband. What do I prefer? I, do I prefer the head of John the Baptist? Or do I prefer something that will contribute to my life? If she's only a dancer, she doesn't have the brain and the mind and the view and the focus to think of the future. And so the mother said, the head of John, the Baptist. And then in verse 25, she came in straightway with haste unto the king and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. What are you going to do with that hedge? How would you feel, teenage girl, to have the head of a preacher, the head of uh, the forerunner of Jesus Christ? Are you going to carry that to your grave, the guilt of being the uh, person ex executioner of the great man of God? Well, she was thoughtless and she went to a thoughtless eternity. I will that thou give me by and by the charger in a charger, the head of John the Baptist. Verse 26, and the king was sincerely sorry. There are people who are sorry, but then they don't repent. They're sorry, they don't reverse the word they had given. The king was sincerely sorry, yet for his own sake. His oath sake, the oath 
the promise and the declaration is more important to him than where he will spend eternity and then for their sakes which search with him he would not reject her but the question is where is Herod now where is the dancer now where is the mother of the dancer now? And all those kings that, you know, she pleased with her dancing. All the people that enjoyed the sight of the singing, drumming, and dancing. Where are they now? Matthew chapter 25. I'm reading from verse 46. Matthew chapter 25, verse 46. It tells us where they have gone. They shall go away into everlasting punishment. Is it worth it? The dancing of one hour, the dancing of one night, the dancing of a few weeks and the dancing of a few years with all the drinking and with all the drugs and everything that goes along with that. To spend eternity in hellfire, these shall go away into everlasting punishment. But thank the Lord for those who are righteous and for those whose names are written in the book of life in heaven. And for those who are going on in righteousness and purity and holiness. And they are waiting for the coming of the Lord And did not destroy their future and eternity With worldly dancing But the righteous into life eternal The righteous into life eternal I know you are going to heaven I said I know you are going to heaven And I welcome you to the narrow path that leads to heaven Quit the broad way in worship. Quit the broad way anytime, every time in your life and remain righteous, regenerated, redeemed of the Lord standing for the watch of the Lord. And blessedness and reward in eternity will be for every one of us in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and take everything we have learned today unto the Lord, the Lord himself. Well, bless your life Take everything to the Lord And say my life will be to the praise of God My actions will be to the praise of God Everything I do, everything I am Will be to the praise of God The presence, the path, the provision, the promise of God Will never leave your life